A bankruptcy court judge declined to rule definitively on whether to appoint an independent examiner into the FTX bankruptcy case. The U.S. government argued that statute called for the judge to demand such an examination, while FTX said a probe would represent a costly duplication of up to $100 million worth of services. During the Monday hearing, FTX CEO John Ray saying the collapsed crypto exchange is being advised by cybersecurity company Signia after a massive hack in November. FTX saw mysterious outflows worth hundreds of millions of dollars in early November, around the time it filed for bankruptcy and founder Sam Bankman fried resigned as CEO. Ray saying he hired technical experts in an attempt to shore up FTX's insecure environment and that Signia had prevented what could have been further hacking. Separately, Ray's hourly fees are not cheap, telling the court he charged FTX $690,000 for his first few weeks on the job. All right, joining us now to discuss today's FTX hearing is former Orange County prosecutor Steve Barrick. He's currently a partner at Barrick & Associates. Steve, great to have you on the show. Did you get a chance to hear the hearing? And if so, what were some of your key takeaways? I, I did, and thank you very much for having me. I, I think what's interesting here, I think the Bitcoin community as a whole has to look at this hearing and this process as something that's very important. Um, I think the community as a whole should want an independent examiner brought in. I, I think that right now it's very important to maintain credibility within the industry. I saw the hearing. I listened to some of the things Mr. Ray said um, after I got over the shock of how much he was billing for the first few months. Um, I, I think it's very important that this process um, is very clear, very transparent. Uh, those hacks that occurred in and around the filing of the bankruptcy uh, look very suspicious to me and really have to be examined. I, I know Mr. Ray is trying to keep everything in-house, but I think an outside examiner would make a lot of sense. Yeah, so the bankruptcy court judge declined to rule definitively on whether to, an appo to appoint right. an independent examiner into the FTX case for now. Now, you mentioned uh, John Ray, the current CEO of FTX. He previously cited that an independent examiner could cost $90 million to $100 million based right. on his experience with working with companies like Enron. Does that sound right, right about you? To, does that sound about right to you? Well, look, he's billing at over $1,300 an hour, and I think he billed uh, FTX almost $700,000 uh, in the, his first few weeks on the job. So I give him a lot of credit for coming out and saying, uh, or a lot of nerve for saying, hey, an independent examiner is going to be incredibly expensive. $90 million seems extreme, but I, I will tell you, this is a very complex case. It's a very complex issue. But I think it has to be handled in the right way to ensure uh, consumer confidence and investor confidence in the Bitcoin community going forward. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm not saying it won't be expensive, uh, but that number seems extreme to me. My prediction, by the way, is that I think the bankruptcy judge is going to appoint an independent examiner because I think the stakes are just far too high. Well, there were several, more than a dozen states that have called on an independent examiner. And uh, Ray himself said he was not only aware of that. I mean, he was only aware of maybe two states re requesting that, which is surprising. Right. Uh, the U.S. trustee also did not bring up any issues with conflicts with uh, Sullivan and Cromwell, the uh, law firm representing FTX, who also uh, advised them uh, prior to the bankruptcy. Uh, why is that the case that that wasn't brought up? Would that not be pertinent to pertinent to an independent examiner? Well, I think right now, I think a lot of, I think people have to understand this from a legal standpoint, this case is unprecedented. Um, it's a, it's a novel, a new marketplace. Um, I think everyone's trying to just get a handle on uh, what the proper course of action would be. I would imagine that at some point the U S trustee may uh, bring up the issue regarding conflicts, regarding these law firms and their prior relationships. But I think for now, I think the biggest battle or the most interesting decision is going to be is an appointment of the independent examiner because a lot of whatever the decision is uh, on that issue is going to trigger a whole host of other things. Well, you mentioned 
the hacks. And I, I was looking at some criticism online uh, from folks watching this hearing. You know, they, right. they felt that Ray's reasoning fell short. For example, you know, he talked about the cybersecurity environment around digital assets make it dangerous right. to allow access to an examiner. Yet his team was the one that lost or reported, you know, more than $400 million right. worth of customer assets through, through hacks. Is there a right. conflict there? <laughs> well, um, there's certainly a lot of nerve. Um, I think that, <laughs> look, he is trying to, this is quintessential um, whenever a, a business goes into a bankruptcy court, the existing business tries to limit uh, the power of any independent examiner, any trustee, uh, any business will battle that, whatever industry, right? So I understand why Mr. Ray is making the arguments that he's making. I don't know if they're very strong. Um, and I think the facts um, some, in some way makes those arguments look ludicrous uh, on their face um, to kind of almost argue out of both sides uh, regarding um, the points he made during the hearing. So, look, I understand why he's making these arguments. I, I, it's they're uncommon. I think they're going to be very persuasive, to be frank with you. Well, in the case of Celsius, uh, that bankrupt crypto lender, they did benefit from the report of an independent examiner. Um, I, right. do, you, do you think it was it cost ninety to one hundred million dollars? And if not, you know why? Why is this case? Well, I imagine it's the complexity that this case does that make this case for FTX, uh, you know, solid in that it, it will be w much more expensive than the Celsius one. Well, look, I think the, the issue in the FTX case is, um, and I'll just make a, a broad statement based on being informed. There, there appears to have been a lot of fraud. And I think that's where I just think that there's the independent examiner is going to be dealing with getting down to the, the bottom of things factually, dealing with the trustee, dealing with uh, government agencies, including prosecutors throughout the country. So I think it is going to be very complex. I think FTX, the issue with FTX is the issue of whether there was any criminal wrongdoing. And I think that's why that makes this case more complicated. 90 to $100 million, I think, um, is a little bit I think there's some hyperbole going on there, to be quite candid with you. But it is going to be a very in-depth process for this examiner. But look, I mean, at the end of the day, is if FTX is going to survive or morph into something else or for the betterment of the entire industry as a whole, I think it's very important for an independent examiner to come in, issue an independent report, and really get down to the bottom of what happened here. Uh, but I mm -hmm. think it is going to be more complex than the Celsius case. Steve, John Ray is an attorney previous known for leading the Enron recovery efforts. Your thoughts on how he's handling the legal proceedings so far? Well, I think Mr. Ray has got a, um, a tough job. Uh, he's obviously a very experienced lawyer, um, a very articulate lawyer and a, and a smart guy. I think uh, he's got a difficult job. I would say um, his biggest problem is just the public relations problem. I, I think that uh, anytime you're dealing with facts as outrageous and uh, extreme as this um, and salacious almost, uh, he's got a tough job. Um, so legally, I, from what I've seen initially, he seems to be doing things uh, in a way um, that most lawyers would do, that most good lawyers in this space would do. His biggest battle, I think, is in the, in the field of public opinion um, and also... Um, I'm not even sure if he knows all the facts uh, involving this company quite yet. So he may be feeling like he's drinking out of a fire hose at this point uh, as well. Yeah.